Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Obs and Gun Made Easy. In today's video, I'm going to discuss pregnancy dating criteria. Pregnancy dating criteria. Estimation of gestation age accurately is very important in obstetrics because it is often used to make a diagnosis such as preterm labor, post deaths, intrauterine and growth retardation, large for deaths, small for deaths. A normal duration of pregnancy is about 280 days from the first day of the last menstrual period. So a normal pregnancy should last about 280 days. 280 days is equivalent to 40 weeks. So if a pregnancy has lasted more than 40 weeks, it's called a post-date pregnancy. EDD is estimated date of delivery, also known as EDC, which is estimated date of confinement. So what are the dating methods we use to calculate the gestation age as well as the EDD? The first one is the last menstrual period. The last menstrual period is the most common dating method we use. So we use the first day of the last normal menstrual period. What do we mean by this? This is the first day the woman started attending her menses. So the first day she started attending her menses is called day one of the menstrual cycle. To use the LMP accurately, the woman should have regular cycles and her menstrual cycle should be about 28 days in length. If a woman's menstrual cycle is about 28 days, we assume that she ovulates on day 14 of the menstrual cycle. This is probably when she conceived on ovulation day, which is day 14. But we do not use the ovulation date to calculate the gestation age. Why? Because not every woman ovulates on day 14. So it's safe to use the last menstrual period to calculate the gestation age for every woman. In some cases, if you use the LMP to calculate the gestation age, it will give you false results. Like soon after contraception use. Why? Because some contraceptive methods mess up the pattern of the menstrual cycle. If a woman has irregular cycles, if her menstrual cycle is more than 35 days, why? Because women who have menstrual cycles more than 35 days don't ovulate on day 14. Most likely they ovulate on day 21. If a woman was having lactation amenorrhea, if she was bleeding in early pregnancy. So these are some of the situations that when you use the LMP, they will give you a false gestation age or EDD. So you can use the LMP to calculate the EDD using Nigel's rule. So Nigel's rule is used to calculate the estimated date of delivery and is most accurate if the woman has a 28 days menstrual cycle. And there are two methods of Nigel's rule. The first method of Nigel's rule is the most commonly used method. So the first thing you do is you subtract 3 from the month, add 7 to the day. Now the question is, should you add 1 to the year? It's not necessary to add 1 to the year all the time. You only add it if it's necessary. I'll give you some examples where you see why you shouldn't always add one to the year. So in this exercise, I'm going to show you why you don't add one to the year all the time. You only add one to the year if it's necessary. Here's our example. The LMP is 1st January 2022. So the first step is you subtract 3 from the month. So you subtract 3 from January, which gives us October. The second step is you add 7 to the day, which gives us 8 October. If you see here, I haven't added anything to the year, I haven't added 1, it's giving us 2022. So the EDD is 8 October 2022, and it does make sense. Look at the LMP, this is 1st January 2022, and the pregnancy is only 9 months. So 9 months to January is within the same year, so it should be... 2022. Our EDD is 8 October 2022. So in this wrong example, I'm going to use the same LMP 1st January 2022. The only difference is I'm going to add one to the year. I'm going to show you why it's not necessary to add one to the year all the time. So the step one is subtract three from the month, which gives us October. Step two is you add seven to the day, which gives us 8 October. Now in this example, I've added step three. Okay, if you note, I've added step 3. So in this one, I've added 1 to the year, which gives us 2023. So our EDD comes to 8 October 2023. It does not make sense. You mean to say that the woman is going to carry the pregnancy for 18 months. So 
This is what I was trying to say. You do not add one to the year all the time. It's not necessary. You have to evaluate the exercise in front of you and see, should I add one to the year or not? Is it making sense? So in this example, I want to emphasize to everyone to say, when calculating EDD using Miguel's rule, it's important to go step by step. The first step is subtract three from the month. The second step is add seven to the day. You do not do everything at once. So the first step is subtract three from March, which gives us December. The second step is you add seven to the day. So you add seven to 28, which gives us four. Now you must be wondering how did we end up with January here when we were in December. Once you added seven to the 28th, you tipped into the next month. Okay, you added seven to 28 December. December ends with 31st. So the next day is tip into January. That's how we end up with January. How did we end up with 2023? It makes sense. If you add nine months to March, it should dip into next year. So that's why we have 2023. So our EDD becomes 4th of January, 2023. In case you're asked to calculate the EDD using Miguel's rule, it's important to remember how many days a month has. So January has 31 days. Okay. February has 28 days. It's always the weird math. And then you have March, which has 31 days. And then you have April, which has 30 days. And then you have May, which has 31 days. And then you have June, which has 30 days. I want you to notice something. Every alternate month is 31. So you skip a month, the other month is 31. The others are 30 end with 30 except for February. Now when you come to July and August, these two always end up with 31 days. But after that, it's the same pattern. You skip a month, it's 31 days. So the months in between end with 30 days. If you pick up a calendar, a full calendar, you can see what I'm talking about. In this wrong example, I'm going to show you why you don't add or subtract at the same time and why you have to follow the step-by-step -step procedure. So I'm going to use the same LMP like in the previous example. So our LMP is 28 March 2022. So in this wrong example, as you can see, I've added 7 to the 28th, so it will give you 4. And I've subtracted 3 from March, which will give you December. And I've added 1 to the year, which will give you 2023. It gives us a wrong EDD of 4th of December 2023. Why? Because you did not follow the step-by-step -step procedure. So it's important to follow the step-by-step -step procedure, otherwise you will get a wrong EDD. So this is the last example of method one of Miguel's rule. Our LMP is 5 December 2021. So the step one is you subtract three from the month, which gives us September. Step two is you add seven to the day, which gives us 12 September. As you can see here, I've added one to the year because the LMP is 5 December 2021. So the pregnancy will tip to the next year. So our EDD is 12 September 2022. So as you can see, it's not automatic that you add one to the year in every LMP. You have to see the exercise in front of you. Should I add one to the year or not? The less common method of Miguel's rule is add nine to the month, add seven to the day, and you add one to the year only if it's necessary, like I have emphasized before. So depending on which method you used, either method one or two, it will always give you the same EDD. It's not specific for any particular month. So you can use either of the methods. So here's an example of method two of Miguel's rule. Our LMP is 1st January 2022. Remember to always follow the step-by-step -step procedure and not to add everything at once. Otherwise, it will give you a false EDD. So the step one is add nine to the month, which gives us October. The step two is add seven to the day, which gives us eight October. As you can see, here, I haven't added one to the year because it's not necessary. If you add nine months to January, it falls in the same year. So our EDD is 8 October 2022. There's a modified Nigel's rule for shorter and longer menstrual cycles. For instance, if the menstrual cycle is shorter than 28 days or longer than 28 days. Mm -hmm. 
In this example, I'm going to show you the modified Nigel's rule. The patient's LMP is 1st January 2022. Her cycle is only 21 days. Remember, we said that in Nigel's rule, it gives you the most accurate results if the woman's cycle is 28 days. So in modified Nigel's rule, what you do if the cycle is less, you subtract the lesser days from the EDD. So in this case, you subtract 21 from 28, you have seven days. Keep that seven days with you. We'll come back to it. So the LMP is 1st January 2022. Here I'm going to use method one of Nigel's rule. We subtract three from the month, which gives us October. We add seven to the day, which gives us 8 October. So our EDD is 8 October 2022. Now we said we subtract the lesser days. So this is 28 minus 21 is 7. This is the 7 I asked you to keep. So you subtract the 7 from the EDD you calculated and it gives you 1 October 2022. And this is the correct EDD for this woman with a lesser cycle. In this example, I'm going to show you how to use the modified Nigel's rule for a longer cycle. We say the average cycle length should be 28 days. The patient's LMP is 28 January 2022, but her cycle lasts for 38 days, which is 10 extra days long. What do you do with those 10 days? You add the extra days to the EDD. So here I've used method one of Nigel's rule to calculate the EDD, which we've already covered. So the LMP is 1st January 2022. You subtract three from the month, you get October. The second step is you add 7 to the day, you get 8 October 2022. And we know that 9 months added to January falls in the same year, so we don't do anything to the year. So our EDD is 8 October 2022. So for those extra 10 days, you add them to the day, you get 18 October 2022. So the new EDD for this woman with a longer cycle is 18 October 2022. And that's how you use the LMP for Nigel's rule as well as modified Nigel's rule. But you can easily use a phone to calculate the EDD as well as gestational age. There's also a pregnancy wheel that you use to calculate the EDD as well as gestational age. So there's some times where a patient doesn't know her LMP or she bled early in pregnancy like implantation bleeding so she confuses her deaths. What can you do to determine the gestational age then? There's what we call quickening. What is quickening? This is the first day or date a woman perceives fetal movement. Quickening can be a bit unreliable because a patient will tell you that I felt the fetal movement at three months. Now, three months is four weeks, guys. A month has four weeks. How are you going to determine the date the woman perceived the fetal movement? There are some women who actually remember the actual date and that makes it easier to calculate the gestational age. So, in prime gravidus, quickening is usually 18 to 20 weeks. Whilst in multiparous women, quickening is between 16 to 18 weeks. So, suppose a woman tells you that she perceived fetal movement on the 21st of June 2022, and she's a prime gravida. So, she was about 18 to 20 weeks when she perceived fetal movement. This was when her quickening was. Because prime gravidus quickening is about 18 to 20 weeks. And today is 21st July 2022. That's four weeks later. So you just add four weeks to this. Which gives you about 22 to 24 weeks gestational age. So that's how you use quickening to calculate the gestational age. The other method used to determine the gestational age is using the cephisiofundal height. It's measured using a tape from the pubic symphysis to the maximum height of a uterus fundus. So McDonald's rule states that the cephisiofundal height in centimeters is equal to the gestational age in weeks if measured between 16 and 36 weeks for a vertex fetus presentation. So, for example, you measured 34 centimeters. This is equal to 34 weeks gestational age. Plus or minus 2 centimeter variation is allowed. If you don't have a tape to measure, you can use the other method of McDonald's rule, which says a uterus is palpable at 12 weeks gestational age, just above the pubic bone. 
At 16 weeks, it's halfway between the pubis and the umbilicus. At 20 to 22 weeks, it's at the level of the umbilicus. At 36 to 38 weeks, it's at the level of the zephystinum. However, at 40 weeks, the fundus can drop below 38 centimeters because the presenting part descends into the pelvis. So this will lower the height of fundus. There's also a McDonald's formula, which is if it's your fundal height multiplied by 8, then you divide by 7, which gives you the gestation age. However, this formula is less commonly used because it gives false results. The last method to calculate the EDD as well as the gestation age is ultrasound. A transvaginal ultrasound for dating in the first trimester using the crown ramp length is the most accurate ultrasound. However, because of expertise, most people do transabdominal ultrasound. Dating scans can still be done till 6 weeks gestation age, but it will give you a variation of plus or minus 7 days. So, the most accurate dating scan should be done between 8 to 11 weeks from the last menstrual period. It will only give you a variation of plus or minus 5 days, and this should be calculated using the crown ramp length. Any ultrasound done after 20 weeks gestation age becomes less accurate. So remember that the first trimester ultrasound is more accurate than the last menstrual period. The further you delay to do an ultrasound, the less accurate the results are. So what is the rule of seven? If an ultrasound is done in the first trimester, it will give you a plus or minus seven days variation. And it's measured usually using the crown ramp length. In the second trimester, there's a variation of plus or minus 14 days from the true gestation age or EDD. It's measured using a bipareto diameter or head circumference. If it's done in the third trimester, there's a variation of plus or minus 21 days and usually the gestation age is measured using the femur length. So if you calculate the gestation age by LMP and compare it to the ultrasound and they fall within the same range, then you use the last menstrual period for the EDD. However, if the gestation age by LMP and ultrasound do not agree, if it's more than these days for each trimester, then you use the ultrasound for EDD, meaning it's more accurate than the LMP. This comes to the end of our discussion on pregnancy dating criteria. Thank you. Please don't forget to subscribe.